Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. In this video, I'm gonna solve your problem of your mixes being so much quieter than everything else. This comes from a question from George Glass, uh, and he left this comment uh, on YouTube on my video about how to make your mix louder. And uh, this is why I love getting questions and getting comments. You need to leave comments because they give me a better understanding of what parts I missed or where you need some extra help. So George, thank you for the comment. Uh, this video is gonna solve your problem. Okay, he writes, what makes using a limiter different from just turning your mix up below clipping? I've pushed my mix just below the red and it's still lower than everything else when I play it in my car. Even exported an in the red copy out of frustration, still low, but the loudness is very apparent coming out of my monitors. This is such a good and common question slash frustration for a lot of people, George. And I'm gonna explain it to you today so you're gonna be good. So the idea in the last video about how to make, not the last, but the video that George was commenting on, how to make your mix louder. We all run into this problem when we first get into mixing where, or recording or whatever, where we work on a song and now we wanna go listen to it in our car or we wanna go play it for our significant other in the home theater system, whatever. And we export it out of our song software and not knowing any better we just export it as it is we get to the car i remember this with my one of my very first albums that i made where i didn't know anything about anything i would always put the cd in my car and i remember i had one of those volume knobs that would turn forever right eternally turning knob but obviously it would only get so loud before it would stop and i would always crank it i would just put my CD in and go crank it up as loud as it'll go. And it was still not loud enough, especially if I was on the interstate, I couldn't hear some of the songs. I, I couldn't quite hear what was happening. Then I put in, you know, the John Mayer CD and it was blowing me out of the water. It was way louder. What was the problem? So I explained in that last video, limiting is the main difference between the two. There is only, let's say this is your song. Here's the quietest part. Here's the loudest part. And as you want to turn it up and make it louder, right up here, you hit clipping. So going out of the frame up here, we've now clipped something. The red light goes off on our main output. We all kind of instinctively know that red is bad, so we have to turn it down. But it's not loud enough. And the only, you know, when you first get into this, the only logical option, if it's not loud enough, is to turn it up. But then we try to turn it up, and it clips and we feel completely stuck. We need a way to turn up the overall volume of the the file of the song without clipping and that's where a limiter comes in it limits those peaks those loudest parts and doesn't allow them to clip so that we can bring up the volume without clipping that's what a limiter does um, so the way that i talk about it and i'll show it to you here in just a second is when you're just working on stuff and you're not technically doing mastering a lot of times you just need to add some volume you don't need to crush it with a limiter you just need to get the volume up to a reasonable volume because if, if i'm working for you you're a client of mine mm. Yes, you're a client of mine. You hired me to mix your project and I send you a mix to review and it's super, super quiet. Even if you know that it's not mastered yet and you understand mastering, there's still gonna be a part of you that's gonna say, eh, this sounds so quiet compared to everything else I listen to. It feels weak. I don't, I don't know if Joe's the right guy to mix this song. And it starts to instill a bunch of doubt in you. That's why if you hire me to mix a song, when I send you a mix to listen to, it is going to have a, a limiter across the master. I'm not gonna be crushing it, but instead of being down here in level, it's gonna be up here where close to where you're used to listening to things to the point where it doesn't, it's not distracting that it's so much quieter than everything else. So the idea is very simple. A limiter has a ceiling to it that nothing can get past and you just turn up the signal into that ceiling. It's like a free way to get more volume uh, without clipping. Now, there are sacrifices you know, with, with everything in life. If I'm getting an advantage here, what am, what's the trade-off? What am I losing? Well, you're losing some of those peaks. So it's gonna take things like the kick and the snare drum and bits of the vocal and the loudest things in the mix and they're gonna get turned down which is kind of a form of compression. And it's gonna instinctively, not instinctively, it's going to necessarily change how they sound. A lot of times it actually changes it for the better. I like the way a snare drum sounds when it hits the limiter in a really you know, loud rock mix. It's kind of a cool sound. It's the sound we've somewhat become accustomed to, um, but there will be trade-offs. That's why when you hear people like Ian Shepard, who is a fabulous mastering engineer and educator, 
please be sure to follow his stuff. He talks a lot about the loudness wars, where we realize just because we can just keep turning it up as close to peaking and clipping as we can, since the limiter stops everything, there's this kind of human nature aspect that takes over where we say, huh, I'm going to take this too far. And we turn it up all the way as loud as it'll go, and everything starts to sound crushed, and it loses its dynamic. It loses a lot of the, the feel of the low end. It just starts to feel mashed together, and that's not great. So that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about simply using a limiter as it was meant to be used to give yourself some more volume so that you can hear things at a nice, reasonable volume outside of your studio, and then come back and make the changes you need to make in your studio. Now, the one other thing that George said was, it's still very loud in my studio, but it's not in my car. Well, that's because you have a, a really nice volume knob in your studio, and you've got speakers that you can just turn up for days. If you were to listen to your mix and then pull up iTunes or Spotify at the same volume coming out of your speakers, you would notice that those are a lot louder than what you're having. So you've kind of fooled yourself into thinking it's loud enough when you don't you aren't using, clearly aren't using any sort of a reference to say, oh, okay, that music is 10 dB louder than what I'm doing. That makes sense. You wouldn't be as surprised when you got to your car that that music was 10 dB louder. If you had been consistently switching back and forth and listening to that music, you'd have a better idea. So a limiter is your answer. Let me quickly show you and give you a visual for how that works. All right, it's about to get real. Here we are, we've worked on a song, really fun song, and we're ready to export it. And Here's the volume of my song as I'm working on it. You can't hear, I wish you would it's kind of quiet in the studio, so I turn up my speakers or whatever, and I can hear it loud, it's wonderful, I'm happy. Well, guess what? If we're listening to this at this volume, and then we switch over and listen to the released, fully released version right here, you just missed, now you carry that shit. It's a huge, huge difference, right? And now there's more to it than just, whoop, quiet. There's more to it than just adding, limiting. There's the mastering is a whole thing, but that's the that's the experience that George is having. It sounds nice in his studio because he turns things up, but then he gets in his car and all the stuff in Spotify is way louder than what he exported. Here's the solution, and let me just show you visually how that works. Now, I, I've used, I've since the last video on how to make your mix louder, I've incorporated Fab Filters Limiter. It's great mainly because it gives me this very cool visual readout of what's happening. So if we just hit play, those are the peaks, and it's going to continue to go across and show me what's happening. Up here at this line, this is my ceiling. So I've set it to negative one. We'll talk about that another day, um, just to give me a little bit of room for any kind of intersample limiting peaks and stuff that happen. Um, but I'm just going to increase the volume of my song uh, and just get the overall volume up. I'm not even going to aim for anything just yet. I'm just going to turn it up. Let's see what happens. I wish you would see. So this is a really quiet mix. Um, I've I just cranked it up 19 decibels, and if we go over here to like the second chorus that has more stuff going on, you'll notice it's going to show me when any limiting happens. Happens, you're going to see it kind of dip down up here. Look at how it's even at the loudest parts. There's not a ton of limiting happening. Come on, here we go. I wish you would see. Okay, there's a lot of limiting happening now. Let's turn it down a little bit. So now we've just, we're only getting like, you know, one to three dB of limiting happening. We've added 13 dB of volume to this thing. And all we've really done is gotten it up to a nice loud level. Now, if the limiter wasn't there, then our, our clip light would be going off because some of those peaks are going to cross over the line. The limiter is keeping those peaks from crossing over. And now we've got a nice loud mix where if we go back over and we hit play in Spotify. Oh, 
Now we're in the ballpark. The, the mastered one is a little bit louder because I'd probably push this a little bit louder if I was mastering this. But literally, when I'm just talking about sending it for reference to clients, I just go find the loudest part of the song. Let's go find that. Here at the bridge is the loudest part. And I just turn up the limiter until there's a little bit of limiting happening, not too much. And I've got a nice, nice loud volume that works and works compared to other stuff that I listen to. Even just in the ballpark is good enough for me. Let's do that here for the bridge so you can see it one more time. Again, we got right there at about the 13 dB range before we started seeing some consistent limiting happening. Again, we've not overdone things, we've just gotten it nice and loud. Now, just for fun, let me show you what happens if you just go nuts and crank it up another 10 or so dB. The only way the enemy wins. You hear how it got kind of crunchy there at the end? It's just because that that's kind of the temptation. It's just, well, if this was loud and it's great, let me keep pushing it. So use some restraint, especially if you're just doing this for reference, you're not trying to do mastering. Go err on the side of less. But look, we've got 13 dB of extra volume, um, which has been a big win. And so now we go to the car, we don't hear this. The only way. We hear this. And now our song has a fighting chance and there's just a little bit of limiting happening. It's not limiting every single note. Just those louder peaks are getting the smack down. All right, that's it. George, thank you for your question. I hope this was helpful for you and for anyone else who has this same frustrating problem. This is the solution. You should have a limiter somewhere in your software. If you don't, that should go to the top of your wish list. Make sure you have some sort of a limiter that allows you to do this. It doesn't have to be the fab filter one. It can be the stock one that comes with your DAW, but that will allow you to get some volume without clipping and everybody's happy. If you like this, you'll love my five-step mix guide. Go to fivestepmix.com. It's absolutely free. It'll help you get better mixes faster. Fivestepmix.com. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.